Hey everyone, we got an extra special fourth episode today with Greg Dickerson. This is a video that I wanted to do to remind you about where this man started. I will go find the original video with Greg Dickerson talking about truck in a toolbox, but I've asked him to, to bring us back to how he started after, after he left the military, after he left the restaurant business and how he started with just a truck and a toolbox. How you doing, man? Doing good, Michael. How about you? I'm doing right. So can you remember those times when you were just a one man show and it all started? Can you remind us how that was? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I made a video the other day of the first little project I did right out of the gate when I started that. So, you know, graduated high school, um, went in the military, got out of the military, you know, worked in some restaurants, worked in construction. So I had some skills, you know, I had some construction skills and I always kind of had a little side business on the side doing fences and decks and little odd man, odd handyman stuff. But in 1997, I decided to go full time, start a construction company doing remodeling and handyman stuff because I was trying to get some stuff done at my house that I'd bought uh, when we moved the Outer Banks. Couldn't get anybody to call me back. I was talking to my neighbors and they're like, yeah, everybody's so busy. You know, things are so busy. Nobody will call you back. Hmm. They said, so literally, if you will answer the phone, call people back and do what you say you're going to do, you'll be as busy as you want to be. So I had a pickup truck and I had some tools, basic tools. I didn't have much. And um, I went out and uh, found a name and I created a name. This is the key that made it sound like I'd been there forever in business. And it was the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And I, and I said, hey, how about Outer Banks Construction? Nobody had that name. Huh. So I went and got that. And instantly it sounded like, you know, I'd been there forever with a name like that. So that helped from a credibility standpoint. You know, I'm a marketer, a guerrilla marketer, all that. So um, I was talking to my neighbors, had friends that owned restaurants, friends that, had, that were general contractors. And I said, hey, you need any small work done. I'm doing, you know, small jobs, handyman stuff. So um, I got a call from a friend of mine that owned a restaurant, needed a little deck built. And that was what I filmed the video on. And I went out, I got it. So none of my own money. I had some tools, had a truck. I went out and uh, estimated the job. I got a deposit for half, half the money so I could go buy the materials. And, you know, I don't know. I think I made this a $500 job. I made two, 300 bucks, whatever it was. And that was my first job. And I was just, I remember thinking, man, if I can do that, you know, cause at the time, I don't think I was making more than, you know, 50 or 60,000 a year combined between, you know, my wife and I, she was a teacher and I was working in a restaurant, you know, and this was 1997. We might've been making 60 grand combined mm. and um, didn't really have any money in the bank. You know, I had credit cards, I had good credit and all that. We'd owned a couple of houses and we had equity in our house, but um, you know, I had no money to start with no investors. So that's where it started. And then I went and did some work on another restaurant, you know, painting and doing some trim work and a little bit of stuff like that. And then a friend of mine was a builder and he said, hey, you know, I've got so-and-so that's a client. They need this little job done. I'm too busy. Will you go do it? So I just kind of started doing that. And I was just doing what I could do myself. And then it started getting busy. So I hired uh, another guy to work in the field, a carpenter, because I didn't know anything about really, you know, I didn't know how to do a lot of carpentry work. I was a handyman. I could repair stuff, fix stuff. I could do trim, but that was it. I wasn't a framer. I wasn't a master carpenter. Um, so, you know, I uh, hired a guy to help me in the field and, and to be a worker. And then, uh, and then I hired another one so that I could step out of the field. You know, this was probably six months, maybe a year down the road. I had two full-time employees working in the field. Then I hired a third and in the field. So I had a full crew. And then at that point, I was doing nothing but estimating jobs, getting materials to the job and they stayed on the job all day doing the work. And I had exited working in the field. Then my third uh, or fourth hire was the most critical hire. It was a part-time office manager bookkeeper to start doing all that. Cause I was still doing books by hand, oh my God. you know, on a little, yeah, a little ledger payroll, all that was being done by hand. So I bought a computer, hired her part-time. I didn't even know how to use a computer, didn't know how to send an email, none of that. Didn't have a smartphone. It was all cell phones and pagers, you know, at the time. Hmm. And, um, so she started handling all the administrative work. So I stayed on the road all day long doing nothing but estimating and selling and getting stuff lined up. And then I hired somebody to manage the field operations. So he was over the crew getting materials and kind of lining logistics up. Then I added another crew. Then I added another crew. So I had three crews, one project manager over them. Then I had another project manager split the crews up, hmm. hired another crew, had, you know, two different sets of crews underneath these project managers. And I think I had a third. So at the peak, when I was doing everything myself in-house, I built it to 20 employees. I had three project managers overseeing four different crews, had an office manager handling all of that. 
And I owned two or three other companies that I'd gotten involved with and bought, you know, along the way as well. Plumbing company, storm shutter company, pool spas, landscaping, hurricane shutter. It's a four or five different businesses. This was over a two, three year period, but I wasn't making any money. And I was doing about two and a half million dollars a year in revenue. And I wasn't making any money because I had this huge overhead. I had all these employees and they were stealing from me and they weren't getting stuff done. And, you know, uh, they were supposed to get a job done in 20 hours. It was taking them 40 because yeah, they were just dogging it, you know? Yeah. So I turned and I said, all right, I'm going to turn all these guys into subcontractors. They're going to do the work for me. Turnkey outsourced one price. As soon as I did that, I started making money and I was profitable. So I got rid of all those employees hourly oh. and all I had were management. So I had superintendents running the jobs, had my office manager and everything was subcontracted from that point on. And they supplied all the materials, you know, for the little jobs. And I supplied it for the big jobs. Instantly overnight, I became profitable. Hmm. and started making making money and 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 then I started building spec houses and I did videos on that my first one was a little hundred thousand dollar three bedroom two bath spec house and then I did a few more and then I did some land deals and then I started doing you know the big multi-million dollar houses and um uh, you know where the kitchens were 100 grand you know on these multi-million dollar houses so that's kind of how it evolved and I just literally over a seven year period it started from me doing that one little deck doing everything myself to hiring a couple of people and then growing. And then I took on a leasehold space. that was an 800 square foot office warehouse space, you know, to, to house my business. And then, you know, got my general contractor's license along the way and started building and developing and investing the profits. When I started to become profitable, I invested the profits in my own deals and uh, was doing work for other investors and developers and started learning from them. Um, you know, so, I mean, that's kind of how, how, how it progressed and, and how I did it. Wow. So let's, I just want to rewind that just to make sure I got kind of the highlights. So you went, so from zero to three years, you went from a, you individually to 20 people. That yeah, probably roughly. two, maybe two and a half, two to two and a half years. All right. So you're sitting there year two and a half. You're like, God damn, I'm busy, but not making any money. You have the epiphany to essentially flip the script from W2 to 1099s essentially. Uh, mm -hmm. and you know, very quickly you're like, Hup, it's amazing. There's actually profit left over, right? That's, that was game changing. And it was a win-win for everybody. Yeah. They had their own business. So they got tax write-offs. They were making more money than I could pay them. Mm -hmm. Um, it, you know, it was just a win-win all the way around, but yeah. Yeah. And in addition to that, right around year two and a half, you, you had several other companies as well, like storm shutter and all of that. You bought those mm -hmm. as well. Now you bought existing businesses or you just started from scratch in these other entities. A couple were started from scratch and then a couple were existing, had a painting company. Okay. Um, so that one of them was a plumbing company. It was my plumber and, you know, he was doing projects for me and it was difficult to get, get somebody to do your work. Uh -huh. um, and he was struggling financially. So he came to me and, and uh, said, Hey, why don't you buy the company? Then you'll have your own plumbing company. You won't have to wait anymore. Da, 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 da. So, you know, I bought him out and uh, that was where I did a stock purchase, bought the corporation, never do that. That was a big mistake. And um, I, I never did another one after that because you get all the liabilities and all the issues that could potentially come with it. Then when you go to sell it, you know, you're still literally, you know, somewhere in the past, you were a you, owner of that stock, owner of that corporation. So after I'd sold the company down the road, he'd gotten himself in trouble again, or somebody did and owed a bunch of money to a vendor. Well, they had me listed at one point as the guarantor, even though I removed myself from the guarantor and sent him a letter and did all that because I sold the stock back to him. My name was still in the mix. So I still had to prove I was no longer the guarantor. And, you know, it was for 500,000 bucks that they were trying to come after me for. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. Very, very cool. So then um, what you, so you started 97 by, let's just call it 2000. You flipped the script. Uh, when do you sell that business? Because I know you get to a point where you're like, you know what? I'm going to go back and be a solopreneur, solopreneur-ish. What year? Well, just developer, yeah. When, when do you sell it? So oh, that was 0405. 05, that 05. was, uh, yeah. yep, that was 0405, right at the peak of our market. And I was doing a bunch of other things. And, you know, um, the building company had grown to a point to where it was prime, you know, prime time to go ahead and sell it and move on and just, you know, flip the script to outsource developer mm -hmm. and hire other general contractors to work for me. It, it was actually better to do it that way. So I'm curious when you made when you made that decision, right? Because you you had spent now almost a decade building this. 
were you exiting because you thought you were at the peak? Were you exiting for quality of life? Like, you know what? I don't need to work this hard anymore. I've got, you know, I can do other things. Was it a combination? What, I mean, you drive home one day, maybe you're at dinner with the wife and you have the idea, honey, I'm going to sell this thing. I, that, th where did that first idea come from? Because that, that's- Well, I was, so there's risk in building. So when you have a building company, you have a lot of risk, you know, and you're taking a lot of risk. And a few things that happened in the business with some employees that I was like, I don't want that risk anymore. Mm. Like I had, you know, a major officer of the company that got caught drunk driving in a company truck, Ooh. you know, and, and you know, that kind of stuff. And I had another employee that ran over a septic system, you know, it was a peat system that was a $20,000, um, you know, septic system. I had to pay for that. So things like that, you know, I was just like, you know what, I'm tired of dealing with all this. And I was making way more money with no time, energy, and effort at all doing the development. Now, when I say no time, energy, and effort, I didn't have all these employees. Yeah. I didn't have this big office. You know, I didn't have all these things. And I was like, man, I've got all these different businesses. I'm doing all these deals. I was making all my money in the development and in the land side of the deals, not as a builder general contractor. Now, that company was profitable, but I was making two to three times more doing these other things. Yeah. So the juice wasn't worth the squeeze anymore. You there know? you and, go. Yeah. Yeah. And the risk, the risk wasn't worth it. All right. That makes sense. So again, so it was kind of a, Hey, the, you know, there's a lot of risk here, not enough juice in the squeeze. Uh, that makes total sense to me now, right? You, you come home, I can just imagine you looking across the table at your wife, or maybe it's a reflection going, you know what? I'm done. And then you, 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 do you, you sell it? Do, do you just get cashed out immediately? Do you got to carry paper? How, just paint the picture of how somebody cashes out of a, you know, a, a tens of millions of dollar business. Is it just one liquidity event or you take, you take cash over time or how, how'd that work out? You know, it depends on the individual and the business. Uh, you know, nowadays, a lot of them are a one-time liquidity event because there's a ton of capital out there looking for those opportunities. But back in the day, it was more of a, you know, a little bit down, a little bit along the way with okay. milestones. And a lot of equity deals are done that way. Um, cool. I'm working with a guy now that I'm coaching that, that, that sold his company. And he had a two-step process, you know, where he got, you know, one payment. He had to stay on board, get the company to a point, and then he gets his final payout. Mm. So it, it's really up to you how you structure it. And I think mine, there were three different events before I was out completely. And there were some assets with it as well that, that kind of went along. So, sure. you know, there were some projects in process. So there was, there was a little bit of a different stuff there. But and the, the other thing too is where I was at, you know, we were limited by our geography. So you could only get so big in that market for what we were doing. Yeah. You know, there, there, you can only, you can just only get so big in some markets for what you're doing. You know, you're not going to get every project. So once I reached that threshold, that's where I was like, I've done all I can do with this company. You know, let's go do something else, you know? And uh, yeah, well, folks, this is just a taste of what uh, was in Greg's original truck in a toolbox video. I'll do my best, but I promise you, if you go on my channel and you just search truck in a toolbox, it'll be the only video that comes up. <laughs> so Greg, I appreciate you, man. Thanks again for stopping by. Yeah, I enjoyed it, Michael. It's good to talk to you. Thanks.